the way she behaved, the things she said about me and the disrespect she had for me was unbelievable. I disagree. I think it's very believable that she had a lot of disrespect for you because of how you had disrespected her by cheating on her all the time. All right, this one is a hell of a question, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through it. We'll, we'll, we'll speak to it as we go through, but bear with me. Um, let's explore this. Strap in, holy shit balls. I am 34 and my missus is 31. We have a 20 month old boy and we live in, you don't need to know that. I have cheated on my wife several times over the years. Few times I got caught and we sorted things out. For all those times, either I managed to lie and make her believe that it was just sexting or that we made out but nothing more. Around about a year and a half ago, I got caught again and I genuinely felt guilty about it. Which would imply that you didn't the times previous, okay? All right. Um, so what was different? I wonder what was different there. Uh, was it because you really got caught and there was no way you could back out of it by saying it was just sexting or that you just made out, right? And so was it guilt that you properly, that you got caught this time or just because there's no fucking way you could back out of it? That's worth investigating, bro. So instead of lying, thank you, I confessed to her, told her everything and all the past incidents, incidents of me cheating. We went to a relationship counselor. I did everything I thought I needed to do. I promised to her, more importantly to myself, that I would not be doing that anymore until now, I'm staying true to that commitment. So it takes a turn in a moment, what you're going to get to. But first of all, you've cheated on her for years. Then you got caught properly and you came clean. Beautiful. Well done. Um, you went about all, yeah, did, that, did everything, told her everything, confessed everything, went to a relationship counselor, and did everything I thought I needed to do. Then and there, but what you've done is not one thing, is a lot. So there's a lot of consequences, right? Our behaviors have consequences. So there's a lot of consequences here that don't just get tied up by seeing a relationship counselor. I don't even know how many times. Um, and then promising moving forward. I'm never going to cheat on you again. That doesn't mean everything from the past gets wiped. That, 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 that's, that's got a lot in it, right? But you stayed true to that commitment till now. Well done. Um, but we can't just look past that shit, okay? Nonetheless... After confessing everything to her, instead of her being understanding and wanting to give this a start, she became extremely vindictive. I'm not surprised. Do you think that you can just confess, go to a counsellor, and then it, everything will be okay? You have absolutely betrayed someone and lost their trust. So maybe it's not the most effective thing for her to be vindictive, but you can probably, if you use some empathy, understand how it's hard for her to be understanding of someone who cheated on her, who betrayed her. So take off the victim hat for a moment and fucking check yourself. You have had zero integrity, zero trust trustworthiness, and you are asking for understanding. So at the moment, fair enough, you want to be understood, but you, in my mind, need to sit back and look at how hard it's going to be for someone to understand and trust you. And you can probably put yourself in her shoes and think about how would you feel if the tables were absolutely mirror um, turned? Do you think that you'd be loving and understanding of that person? Or might you feel a little bit resentful, a little bit angry, a little bit pissed off? Maybe. So it's worth putting yourself in the other person's shoes in this situation, but in any situation in our relationships. We often have two people who are trying to be heard and, and no, 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 no. It's a race to victimhood and that doesn't get us fucking anywhere. Instead of sitting and trying to see the other person's experience from their point of reference. Two-way empathy is what we need in relationships, hands down. So be patient with this person. Holy shit. She is trying to get over massive betrayal and being vindictive might not be a great outcome, but maybe she's doing the best with what she's got, given the circumstance that she feels, I'm guessing, trapped in a relationship because you have a son that she wants to stay for, but she's got a, a partner who has consistently cheated on her and betrayed her. So I'm going to be tough in this video because it fucking needs it, bro. Holy shit. Okay. So it goes on. Please forgive me as I wade myself through this. 
She told all about this to my relatives, my friends, most importantly to my parents, but not in a way that she was complaining, more like blaming them for raising me wrong, as if it was their fault. Okay, that's a bit of a shit move. But again, I can empathize that she is hurt and she is getting it out there. Maybe not in a very effective way. Maybe not in a very effective way. Um, but I think what she's trying to communicate here is you don't get to do this stuff and then it's just gone. I'm fucking hurt. I'm really fucking hurt. She's not communicating it very well. Her attitude towards my mother changed overnight and it was very painful to watch. So she's taken some of the hurt from you and she's put it onto to other people, which is not very effective. But again, if you sit back, you can understand why it's happened. Then the worst thing happened. Last January, my mother passed away from a massive heart attack. I am very sorry to hear that. That is incredibly sad. And I can empathize 100% my mother passed away. Uh, when she was 59, here, she was just 57, very active and no underlying heart health conditions. That broke me completely. I'm yet to recover from that. Perhaps that will take a long time to recover completely. Yeah, it will. It's, it's very hard to lose anyone, especially a mother. When I was at my mother's place, I saw the conversations between my mother and my wife in her phone. I perhaps shouldn't have seen that, but the way she behaved, the things she said about me and the disrespect she had for me was unbelievable. I disagree. I think it's very believable that she had a lot of disrespect for you because of how you had disrespected her by cheating on her all the time. Can you make sense of that? It's completely believable. If you remove yourself from it. It might be incredibly fucking hurtful. It might not be very effective from her, but it's believable. It's believable that she disrespects you, that she has no respect for you because you have not respected her, your relationship, and yourself, by the way, by cheating on her all the time. Um, but also possibly those other people didn't respect them either. So so check the respect thing. Respect, Disrespect for men is fucking huge. We hate being disrespected. But we have to look at how that's playing out. And you are the genesis of that disrespect. You need to take ownership of that. A part of me blames my wife and also myself for my mother's death. Even though the heart attack was not caused by this, but sure had an effect. Well, that's how I feel. So look, again, that's so sad. And, and I don't want to be here commenting on your mum's death. I'm not an expert doesn't sound like this is related, but your wife's not responsible, nor are you, by the way. It's really fucking unfortunate that your mum passed away, but I don't think it will serve you blaming yourself. I also definitely do not think it will serve you blaming your wife, and I don't think it's fear on her. So what this comes back to is, there's, there's a bit more to this. If, can we stay together? I want to for our son. Having a family will be really good for him, and so on. Um, the other part of me says I can't cope with this is when I remember my mother and all that happened plus the lack of attraction we have. So I can't tell you whether or not you should stay together in your relationship. But what I can say is you need to sit down and look at what you have done to your union, which is fucking tear it apart and shit all over it. It's understandable that she has reacted in the way she has, but it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do to be vindictive and do that stuff. So what you guys need to do, my suspicion is, go back to your counsellor and keep talking and keep working through things but first of all as individuals coming together as partners work out do you want to be in a relationship do you want to work this out can you get to the point no are you willing to attempt getting to the point of full forgiveness and putting stuff in the past that's for both of you to work out individually and then come together as a team and I can't answer that for you. But what I think you really need to look at here is some understanding, some compassion, and some empathy, and really looking at what you've done and taking ownership of your shit, bro. Because you have caused a lot of shit. And that doesn't get to mean that that's in relation to your mother's passing. That is a very sad event. This is separate. Do not be placing blame where it is not deserved. Now, that was a pretty heavy Q&A. This is quite a long one. I hope that helps. I really do. If anyone else has got questions around betrayal and cheating and stuff, then get them in. Um, what you get to explore right now is integrity. What is integrity for me? 
because you had zero when you were cheating on your um, wife and going out of your relationship. Something to think about.